Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the therapy campaign. So, it's not looking very therapeutic in the nearby future, as we have many difficult circumstances to potentially deal with. We've got Kairos down here. Where the fuck is he? In there. Still being a problem, still being a nuisance, still being trouble. We've got Felix coming up here to attack, you know, Ragnarok and Taldi are going to have to deal with him, and that's spooky as well, but I think they can handle him. I reckon they've got it, should be fine. And we've got Vlad up here, and we're, we're waiting to meet him in the Chaos Wastes of all places, which might be a questionable place to actually have this engagement, but we don't have a lot of options, and I honestly think this might be the easiest way to deal with him, at least his primary army that he kind of spawns with, because Vlad will come back in like two turns or something after being beaten, he restores really, really quickly. But my hope is that if Vlad does come back, he won't have Isabella in his army. She might go off to join a different army, which would be good because she and Vlad buff each other if they're in the same army. But if we can separate them, it will be a little bit easier to deal with them individually. However, if one is reinforcing the other, then it doesn't matter that they're in separate armies. They'd still buff each other and that would be bad. But uh, if that happens, that happens, you know? Like, what, what are we supposed to do about it, exactly? Not a lot. Just gotta make do. It's possible Felix might attack those two over the end turn, but if he stays there or moves closer, I reckon I'll have them attack him, because then that leaves a clear path to Taitsu. And being able to wipe that out and take that with a bunch of fucking peasants... Do you know who I am? Two armies whose no, total upkeep is just over 1,500 gold, which is not much. Uh, that would be good. That would be good value for money. That would help us. Of course, we still got Frederick over here to deal with. Many things to deal with, but, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll cope. That's me. I'm a coper. Uh, I spend my life coping. I certainly am not going to commit to defending the Dragon's Crossroad, because if I'm correct, and God knows I always am, it doesn't even have a garrison yet, and when it does get a garrison, it will take a very long time for it to replenish. So if they move in to take Dragon's Crossroad, unless Harrieth commits to defending this, I'm not going to. Because this is a suicide mission, attempting to defend that. We'll see what happens. In terms of me, things are alright. Uh, a lot of eye strain and headaches recently, because I've been going at it pretty hard in terms of my work. And I've also been playing a lot of Helldivers 2. I fucking love Helldivers 2. It's a ton of fun. Absolutely adore the game. I can't honestly sit here and say it's like one of the... So as I can't sit here and say it's an amazing game and that it's incredible and oh my god, it's so good. I personally just really like it. I really enjoy playing it. It's definitely at its most fun. I knew this was going to happen, by the way, so I'm not bothered about this. I knew... Uh, I have really enjoyed playing with other people. I've had a lot of fun on the Discord server playing it with other people. So if you've got Helldivers 2 and you need someone to play with, come to the server. We've got people who are playing, and I do as well. So maybe we could play together. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, been having a lot of fun with that. It's been a good time. In fact, one of my old, 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 old friends... Yeah, who isn't Sweetman... Um, who I've known for over 20... I think it's over 20 years, because I'm pretty sure I knew him in primary school. I don't know if he remembers that, though. Um, but yeah, I've known him for over 20 years, but hadn't really spoken to him in the last year or two, just because our lives went in different directions and we're both busy. Um, yeah, he popped up like, hey, do you want to play some Helldivers? And then I invited him to the server, and we were playing together uh, the other night, and that was really nice. And I stayed up till 3 in the morning playing Helldivers, because I was having fun. So this is an interesting situation right here. Because I happen to know that Vlad has his turn before Safari does. Which means if I stay here, Vlad will attack and I will have to hold him off on my own. And that ain't gonna work. Straight up. So what I'm gonna do actually is go here. And assess the situation from there. I need to start replenishing because I've taken some casualties and some attrition casualties. And we need to kind of clean those up. They did not take the Dragon Gate from us, which is interesting. I'm not particularly bothered about it though. If we can hold on to it, great. If not, I don't care. I'm not going to expend any resources towards trying to hold it. That is absolutely fine. This is interesting, however. We need to deal with Felix. Now, let's have a look at these armies. So, of the lady be upon you. so Toddy has a horde of peasants, some handgunners, some archers, and some pistoliers. The pistoliers will be quite useful in their own way. It shall be so. And Ragnarok has spearmen, peasants, some archers, including high elven archers, another unit of pistoliers, and a mortar. For this reason, I think Ragnarok should lead the charge and have Toddy reinforce because... And this is a big one, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm correct... No, mortal. 
No. Uh, and Felix doesn't seem to think I am. But if I'm correct and I attack Felix and he, I don't put my mortars, if I don't fire on him with my mortars and if he's not in range of the mortars at the start of the battle, Felix will not charge. He will wait for us because we're attacking, he's defending, and the way the AI sees it is, well, if the player doesn't attack, then I just need to sit here until the timer runs out and I'll win. So what we do is we just get set up, wait for Toddy to arrive, and then start shelling them, basically, and I think that will work, but we will see. Let's go have a look. Gives us a Pyrrhic victory on auto-resolve. He's got Spearmen, Zombies, X-Wraiths, Vargeists, and Crypt Horrors. Those three concern me. Also, the Cairn Wraiths concern me. And it is worth pointing out that most of his um, undead are high rank, which you will see a lot in Sylvania's armies because Vlad has a passive ability that you can put a point into that means all of his units in all of his armies gain experience every single turn. By contrast, most of our units are not very experienced at all. But then again, these peasants don't need to be experienced, they just need to hold. Now, if, well, yeah, if I was to auto-resolve, we would lose Toddy, his entire army, and in Ragnaroks, we would lose a fair few units as well. No, this needs to be manually resolved. We would never take Taitsu if we lost all of this shit. We need all that shit in order to take the place. I reckon I can do this. I reckon I can do it relatively well. At the very least, I reckon I can do a better job than the auto resolve will give me, because Jesus Christ, the auto resolve was not feeling optimistic. See what we can do at Taitsu. Uh -huh. I wonder if I could be a massive dick about this, right? God knows I always am, but... You see that bit down to the south? You know, let me mouse over it here. See here? I wonder if I could just move around and take that, and then harass them into attacking us. And they would have to charge down here to attack us. And that would be a perfect tight little uh, chokehold, or choke point, to deal with them at. Now, the Vargeists are an issue because they can attack whoever, wherever, so we need the archers to focus on them. The Crypt Horrors will plow through the, the peasants. It won't be close. Even the spearmen, I think, will struggle, even though they have bonuses against large. These are still crappy infantry. And the, uh, obviously the Cairn Wraiths. And where are the Hex Wraiths? Can I see them at the moment? I don't think I can. No, doesn't matter then. Whatever. Point is, there'll be problem as well. And obviously... The skeletons and zombies aren't that much of a problem per se, but their numbers do make it awkward. See, this isn't actually a great position because there are trees and that will block our fire. Trees serve them, they don't serve us. And the further forward, yeah, and there's more trees there, so be, it'd be difficult to fire. But maybe if we were back here, and then there's plenty of area around here to fire at. Alright. Here's what we do. You just hang out in the trees for now. You don't need to do anything. Do not be at fire at will, because I don't want to fire on them yet. You guys go around here. Good. Hopefully, I really hope I'm right and they don't charge, because if they do, we're in trouble. Start battle. Start coming through here. Chances are they'll probably move to face us, because we're moving around the sides. But if we just, like, set up over here or something. If they do decide to do something of a charge, then I might need to use the Pistoliers to kind of juke them around a little bit. But they're not really following us right now. I think they're just turning to face us, so we should be able to head over there nice and safe. This might take a minute, so if nothing interesting happens, I'll probably edit it out while we get set up. But in some cases, I like to talk you guys through the setting up process, because I like you to understand what I'm doing, and... If you happen to play this game, or if you're thinking of playing the game, or whatever, I like the idea of maybe being able to provide you with some tips and ideas. Not everything I say is going to be gold, but there might be stuff here you can apply to your own campaigns. And I think that'd be pretty cool. Now, I will point out that the idea of, like, corner camping, or using the edge of the map as part of a choke point, is kind of frowned upon. I will admit, but... The way I see it is, I'm not exactly, you know... I'm not doing glitches and I'm not doing exploits and it's worth pointing out that if my peasants are at the edge of the map and they break They'll just run straight off the map and they'll be gone instead of getting three routes before they shatter They'll just disappear entirely. So this tactic does come with its own risks. It's certainly not faultless perfect and not having any problems 
but I will acknowledge that it can be ever so slightly cheap to set things up like this, because the AI usually isn't smart enough to send skirmishers around, not when the map is that large. They still might, so I'll probably keep some peasants in reserve just in case, but I do acknowledge that this is a little cheap. I really wish you wouldn't fire on... Don't fire on them, actually. I'd really rather you didn't, because I don't want to provoke them into a charge. We are not ready. Turn off fire at will. It's good. Stop firing on them. Good God. We're not ready to provoke a charge. You're not a there. Cool. They're not a fire at will. That's excellent. We can use the pistolers as a distraction if need be. I think they're just turning. Are they turning to face us or are they advancing? I think they're advancing. If so, that's interesting and we might be able to make use of it. If I'm quick about it. If they are actually genuinely advancing. You guys might want to hurry up. You guys group together. I guess we're going to have to use this as our choke point instead, because they've moved away from there. It makes sense, because we were technically moving around their flank, and they're not just going to let us sit on their flank, are they? They are moving forward, that's for sure, so we should probably at least start getting some shots in. You guys are on a fire at will, so, you know, fire at will, if you would. Or don't, whatever. I ain't your boss, I guess, except I am. Yeah, we're advancing, just very slowly. Okay, well, we'll get these guys out of range for- I guess we're using this, and unfortunate there are trees, but hey. What we could do... Use this. Get set up like that. The gunners are gonna struggle, but oh well. Set you up there. Are you guys in melee? I wish you weren't. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You're not gonna beat Ken Rafes. I think they're losing their nerve a little bit because we're actually turning to face them. You two should come to the front because they're going to need your help. They're in the trees, so they are going to suffer a bit in melee. I'm setting this up a little bit, uh, 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 a little bit scruffy, so it might be a little bit iffy. Get rid of the camera, so that's good. Vargeist are there. All ranged units are going to need to fire on them, except for the mortars, of course, because that would be stupid. Fire on them. Just go for it. Make it happen. You can get in there and help. You're on your way up. You help cover this side. How are you guys doing? You're in melee again, aren't you? Yep, this keeps happening. Those Ken Rafes are fucking fast, man. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have been so, like, complicated about this. Probably should have been a little more simple, just hold a, a position near where we initially started. That probably would have been better. Pistol is, we're taking some casualties. The fire guys appears to be running off to chase them, which is actually good, because they were a, a threat to our ranged units. The mortars can at least rack up some kills like this. Very good. Okay, so where are my archers? Duh, 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 duh. Form up. I want you shooting on the crypt horrors, because they're going to be a problem. Handgunners, I want you there, and I want you to kill whatever you can. You guys... Form up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There. Form up there, so you're ready. How are you guys doing? You're in melee again. Keep moving. I really should put them on skirmish mode, but skirmish mode isn't very good. So, keep spamming there just in case. How's this going? Seems fine. The peasants will withdraw, obviously. That's just what they do. Are the handgunners in melee? They are. That's not good. They shouldn't be there. Need to move more peasants up. How are you guys doing? Still moving. Very good. The can race are almost dead, at least. It's a little bit messy. Hey, not gonna lie. A little bit messy. A little bit messy. 
You guys need to hurry up and get over there. We can't let them get to the archers. That'd be a problem. You guys really kind of need to fall back further. The handgunners aren't going to get to do much today, evidently. You guys need to move. That's a bad situation. I think the pistol is will get run off the field. It's a bit too much um, multitasking having to be done here. You guys need to continue falling back. I don't know why you haven't. At least the uh, at least they're taking damage. Not the end of the world if we lead them back towards our lines. I don't know why the mortar is firing there. I don't know who the fuck told him that was a good idea, but they will be fired. Probably from the mortar, in fact. Send a couple peasants over there. You three push up, actually. I want to make sure this line holds. Probably don't need you here, but it would be worth making sure. Is the handgunner... The handgunner's not showing any. Move the handgun around here, actually, and then he can help take out the fucking Vargeists. Yeah, they failed that charge. Very good. Head that way. I'd still rather they didn't get to my uh, mortars. We are kind of taking them out, though. Good. That was a good shot. If we lose some units of peasants, that's fine. That's just what happens. But it's better than what Aura Resolve was giving us. Alright, I'm going to start pulling those pistolets back around so they can come back through here and the handgunners can shoot down the Vargeist and that will be very nice. The chances are they might die due to army losses before they even get to our lines, but hey. Who's that? Toddy's suffering a bit, but he'll be okay. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You cannot stay there. Get ready, handgunners. This is going to be quite important. Okay, they've ran off the field. Whatever. Pistolers did their job. They actually tied up two of their more dangerous units. Archers still doing their jobs. Where are they going? Yeah, they're coming through here. If they fly over the mountain, that's actually going to be a problem. Do not fly over the mountain. Come this way. Surely you cannot. It's too high. Oh, don't even. I need you guys to track them and shoot them because... Okay, well, they're not playing ball, are they? That doesn't even make any sense, but okay, sure, whatever. You could shoot them. Keep these guys by the mortars just in case they decide to do that. They've actually fucking disappeared. Are you guys actually hitting them? There's a way to find out. Apparently, yeah. Cool, keep shooting, I guess. When you're ready. Quite a few casualties, but not a lot. Of course you landed on the archers, you fucking cowards. Get moving, peasants, tie them up. Peasants do eat. The gunners are dealing with them. Oh, you're not doing anything. Go beat up that nerd who's commanding them. They jumped at the spearmen. It didn't go well for them. They're getting shot to death. Good, good, good. This is the advantage of having a mostly disposable army. Is that it doesn't matter if you suffer casualties. <laughs> really not the end of the world. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. How, did, how are the mortars doing? 346 kills. All right. All right, not bad. I think army losses is kicking in. Yeah, it is. Okay, mortars, stop firing. You're only going to do more damage at this point. In fact, archers also stop firing. No more of that. Good, good. Okay, that worked out. Close victory? Yeah. It was a little close. We took we took some losses. But then again, spearmen were fine. Archers still had plenty of ammo. The mortar was still firing. The main problem there, actually, was the damage that Ragnarok and Toddy took. But they can heal that up relatively soon, I think. We'll probably need to run them down because undead armies just don't fucking die. 
I have noticed this. It's frustrating. Yeah, most of his army is actually still alive, as it turns out, because that's fair. But, you know, we did win. Pistoliers took some damage, but that's fine. They did what they needed to. They skirmished, which is exactly what I wanted. By the time they got to the archers, the archers had already done a lot of damage. Which damaged their ability to actually attack us in melee. It all worked out. But I think I got a bit too, uh, I think I went a bit too complicated with it, as it were. I think I should have just set up a standard line in front of them rather than trying to go around there. Gilded Curus. Curas. Curis. It gives regeneration. That's really fucking good. In, in line with my not dying title, I think I'm going to have the regeneration armor. Thank you. But we'll give these two brave heroes decent armor. Set a spell shield, have armor of the Midsummer Sun. If you went there, you would have just enough movement to camp, which is exactly what we want, in fact. We are going to want to camp over the same turn. We're a little banged up. This is a decisive victory, but we'd lose some peasants. That's a really annoying battle to just fight. Oh, we'd lose two units of peasants. Whoa, fucking... Give Toddy that. Give the handgunners that in case they get jumped. Fuck it, it's two units of peasants, whatever. Kill them, get your peasants some experience. Blessing of the Lady, fantastic. Can we get those guys, at least one of those armies, a, uh, a damsel? Yes, we can, and we should, because some, even the most minor amount of spellcasting ability would be handy. We'll get a Beast Caster. This one has Confident, which will give them increased leadership, which is what the peasants are sorely lacking, so cool. Devotee of the lady. Hello, ma'am. Okay, so that's one war front that's going relatively Valiant well. So it's worth pointing out that our leaders here are heavily wounded. They'll get some replenishment next turn, but it's still not great. My reputation Keep them together. Is there anything you guys can recruit in one turn? Nope. Lord of Bretonia. Nope. Okay, what about allied recruitment? Not Cult of Sigma. Not Safari. And not Ancestral Throng. Valiant Lord. That's really annoying. Alright, fine. <laughs> we'll have to figure something out, because I am going to need these guys to take Tightsu as soon as possible. I don't want them to build another army there and defend it properly. I did my move. Uh, Tancred needs to go bust up uh, Shiama's Rest. Yes. It shall be I don't think he can get there yet. Nope, but we may as well keep resting then. Taking my leave. He could do with a damsel as well, to be honest, but we just don't have the capacity for it. Maybe later. Maybe I'll recruit another prophetess to follow him around, because um, Lori is kind of leading her own forces now. Your behest? Speaking of which... My sight is yours. It might be worth beginning to move her toward her and Zeno towards the Terracotta Graveyard. What can you recruit here? Some stuff. Okay, you can get some troops. My path is clear. There is an army in there. Can you yes. get to her? You can. The lady wills it. What army is that? It's pretty shit. You honor me. Guardian. I think using spells and such, these two could probably I handle it. Honor before glory. She's They're a little bit underpowered, but Frederick's army is shit, and we do have grenade launchers, which could kill quite a few of them if we just hid the infantry to begin with. Lord and, and we could have Laurie just go through and cast a fuck ton of spells. Really mess them up. That could work out. There we go. That should ha How much money is that? Gonna That's going to be a lot of money. Oh, we're going to run out of money. The Green Knight still hasn't caught up and is not close. Great. Cool. Wonderful. Fantastic. Hmm. Well, that's all my turns this turn. That's all I can do. Is there anywhere I can build a bit more money? I could do with a bit more money. More money would be nice if there was more money I could have. 
She may. Oh, I can make some money in Shimei, yep. Yep, get a farm going. That will help. It's more than nothing. Okay, let's see what the fuck Vlad does. It's a little bit of a war going on around here. I don't know if you've noticed. Ah, this would be a victory. And we wouldn't even lose any units. Yeah, fuck it. Zeno, knock him out. Fantastic. Good stuff. Love to see it. That's less good. I didn't think he'd go for Weijin, but I did say, did I not, that everything to the east of our main province is expendable. They would not win this fight. If it was just Vlad and just Isabella, they would not win this fight. If it was just Vlad, they would not win this fight. I'm telling you. There is no hope here. And he can replenish his losses so quickly, there's no point trying to kill off his units. Just let him have it. Aura Resolve was being remarkably generous there. <laughs> That is an impossible fight for us. We'll see who is the fool. Get the leadership. Very nice. We did kill one of their armies, and that's quite good. Hey, Zeno completed his vow. Ah. Ally loses outpost. Yeah, the ancestral throng. Unfortunate, but oh well. So, vows. Okay, so unfortunately, Vlad hasn't gone in the direction I hoped he would, but we can still take advantage of it, technically. Tancred just rolls through here and deals with Zinch. This, this should... This plan should remain the same, because Zinch needs to go. Just get him out of here. Um, these two down here can continue going after this shit, because it's good. May as well do it. If we keep fucking with him, it's something, I suppose. It shall be so. You leveled up. That's fantastic. I love to see it. Get Dwellers Below. It's a really good spell. Seeing as Vlad has decided to fuck off in this direction, I'm tempted to lead my forces over to go take the Red Fortress, which isn't that big a prize, but it is somewhat significant. It's making him some money. Defeating it would also get me another vow, which would improve my combat capabilities and allow me to get questing knights. Yeah, I'd gain campaign movement range and weapon strength, which would lead me onto my Grail Vow, which would then allow me to have perfect vigor, blessing of the lady constantly, magical attacks, wound recovery time minus one, and never being able to be killed in battle, only wounded, and also allow me to get Grail Knights and stuff, which we're a long way from, but good to work towards that. I have at least one army of those things. However, it would take me a long time to get over there, because I'm going to have to, you know encamp march my way over there, which is half movement speed. We are losing money per turn as well, because we lost Wei Xin, and apparently that was making some money. So that's unfortunate, but you know, whatever. Ooh. My strength and wisdom are yours. We do need to stay tight, sir. I will indulge. Which has a defensive building, yes, which makes this very awkward. What kind of garrison are we looking at? Brave guard, standard, undead, yeah. It's not Certainly not untakeable. We can take it fairly easily, I think, but if we don't play it carefully, they could do a lot of damage to us. This will require a little bit of setting up. Guardian. We'll have Ragnarok lead the attack, so we can have his siege weapons Victory. on the field. Close defeat. Honestly, Fall that's surprisingly limit. generous. If needs must. How's it looking now? Pyrrhic victory and we'd lose virtually everything, including Toddy. That's not acceptable. So I am going to have to fight this because I'm not losing. I'm not recruiting lords, especially lords named after people or named for people just to fucking lose them. That's dumb. I ain't doing it. No, no, no way. Fuck that. They won't charge out at us. I'm almost guaranteed. I almost guarantee that they won't. Turn them off fire at will, we're going to need to pick where we fire. Just allowing them to fire at will will not get a suitable result. That's 1 minute 55. We moved it here. 248. It would probably take them roughly that long to get down there, so that's fine. Do that. Okay, so. That would be a good place to fire if you can land some shots real quick. There's a lot of them, yeah, bunched up. That's good, but aim for the skeletons because they're a little more high value. And shields don't protect you from mortars. Trust me. I know Graveguard have really good shields, but they are actually the one thing that is a threat to us because they're actually decent fighters and they're anti-infantry. 
So if we can have the archer shoot them. Don't have them bunch up, actually. Just move forward a bit. We also need to get rid of those bats because they could be a problem. But if the bats don't come out of us, then I say just shoot the grave guard and it'll be fine. Fortunately, they're facing away from us, so the, uh, yeah, the arrows are hitting them. It's going quite well. Those bats are coming into range, we'll need to shoot them instead. I mean, if they actually start moving towards us, I should say, because they're not a priority target right now. Oh, skeleton warriors are getting upset. Skeleton warriors! Skeleton ball! Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> Sorry. I can't help it. I wish someone would mod Eratus into this game. So we've already done quite a bit of damage. Best plan will be to just soften them up before we have to go in ourselves. We've still got plenty of handgunner ammo to use, and I do plan to use it. Good, good, good. They're taking shots. They're not really using their shields very much. Now they will, but a lot of the damage has already been done. Good shot. Also a good shot. Those guys are dying, albeit slowly. Nice little bit of siege warfare for you all at home. I hope you like siege warfare, because uh, that's what we're doing today. At least for this one, this battle. There'll probably be a lot of different kinds of battles throughout the course of the video, but this is the one we're doing right this second. Move them all over there, very good. This unit of archers can join this slot to provide fire. You go stand with them, because we might need you. And handgunners, I do have plans for them. Well, not too far ahead, geez. How's this going? Maybe don't take that firing position because you can't hit them very well. Maybe go around that so you can shoot them from the side. How? What is the mortar firing at that as they run away? Try and get rid of the direwolves because if they come charging out of the front gates, that could be a problem because they might do that. They're not adverse to it. For duty. They are taking archer fire from the tower, but it's not that much. It'll be all right. See what they're doing. They're dodging the mortars, I see. Hit the spearmen instead, then. So the spearmen will actually prove somewhat effective against our lords, and we are going to need them, because they're our best fighters by a country fucking mile. <laughs> a mortar actually hit a bat. That was fun. I like that. I like that. Welcome to the field, Toddy. You and Ragnarok need to stick together. I believe you would buff Ragnarok, so that'd be good. Just playing it nice and chill. No need to be too uh, too hasty about this. No need to rush in. Reduce their numbers, get it to be a situation where we actually have more than they do and we outnumber them, which I think is already the case, but let's emphasize that advantage. Where are the handgunners? They're still moving up. Yeah, infantry are fairly slow, it's not their fault. They have to walk on their little human legs. I get the impression those direwolves will probably uh, route on their own now. Get rid of those grave guard, I don't like them. Because they are the biggest threat to our peasants. Once they die, there is another unit of Graveguard, though it's worth pointing out. But once the Graveguard are gone, they don't have a lot that can stop us. Graveguard over there. I wonder if I could get the Mortar to fire on them. That would actually be a better target. Graveguard are now crumbling. That's great. But basically just softening them up so that the peasant mob can run in and save the day. And we have a couple more ways of actually making that work. These guys are pushing up, they can help as well. They have bows, they can fire over things. Go! 
I'd like to see if I can get the handgunners to perhaps fire off their ammo as well. It's distinctly possible if we do this right that we won't even need to enter the place in order to win. But I don't think we have enough ammo to play it that way. Getting rid of zombies is good. They're durable. They're all kills inflicted. Hey, you did hit some of them. Hey, that's all right. But mortar shells aren't armor piercing, so the damage is being reduced by the fact that Graveguard have quite a bit of armor. But even if a target does have armor and you don't have any armor piercing, you can still do some damage, as evidenced by our archers absolutely caning their first unit of Graveguard. I believe these guys are all now out of ammo. Yeah, back them off. Just get them out of there. You guys step up. Uh, try and shoot those fell bats out of the sky because I don't want them to do whatever the fuck they think they want to do with them. Oh, the handgunners are also doing it. Nice. That was some good shots. Yeah. Alright, I want you guys to push up to here. Don't worry about, don't worry about chasing the bats. Just go there. I'll move these two nearby because if they decide to charge the handgunners, we'll have something to back them up. Uh, we need to get the peasants ready, actually, to charge, because that's a thing we're going to do. This will be the first... This will, that'll be the initial assault. This will be wave two. Because it's a very um, closed-in area. It's going to be a choke point, so we're not going to be able to send the whole thing in. And if we did send the whole thing in, and I don't know, they had our mortar misfired, as it were, shot in the wrong direction or whatever, that could be real bad. You guys, can you guys see anything from there? Not really. Can you just get up there and have a go at those spearmen? Even if you're shooting a shields, they're not great shields. All right, cool, fire. They might counter, yeah, I think they're counter charging. Good thing actually that you guys were on um, skirmish mode because uh, that suits me just fine. Turn off skirmish mode at the moment because it's not really helpful. You two go in. I know they're spear units, but you'll be fine. They're just fucking skeletons. And then you guys turn around and fire. I'm confident in your ability to not hit the generals. Fire on them. Oh, yeah, they're getting fucked up by the guns. No problems. No worries. This is what the peasants are for. Wait for them to get into melee. Good. Now you guys back off. You guys still firing? I think they're getting ready to fire. It's a little awkward because they might accident. Now nah, they're doing it. They're doing it. Oh, beautiful. Good stuff. Now you guys pull back just a little bit because the gunners can totally shoot them. Get ready to counter charge them when the time comes. Archers have fallen back. Move around here. Peasants are beating the shit out of the bats with the spades and pitchforks. Keep firing. A little more firing. You guys are going to have to stop them. Good stuff. Now, they're still charging, but they are so horrifically damaged, they're not going to do much damage to the handgunners. You can still fire on something, I'm sure. Hit those zombies. Uh, the mortar is now out of ammo. Yep, that's expected. Go back there with the rest of the ranged units with no ammo. We will have to deal with those Graveguard eventually, but we have wiped most of their army by this point. You guys go there so you're out of it. <laughs> you're not in fucking gun range. And gunners are doing alright, actually. Okay, I think it's time to lead the assault, perhaps. Charge in on them. Ah, Crypt Ghouls. You guys should go take care of the Crypt Ghouls, because they'll hate that. First Assault Team could go after Skeleton Warriors, they'll be alright. And then once they've cleared this, like, initial bit, we can move the Handgunners in to try and get a decent position. Tell you what, actually, uh, you guys go that way. Handgunners, if you can get into position to help there, and if you guys can perhaps go around here and start shooting at them, because they are fighting a lot of things over there. They'll probably win, but we don't want them to take too much damage, because everyone's going to need to take time to rest after this. I know you guys can fire from there. Please do it. Thank you. What orders? 
Okay, uh, hang on. I've got an idea. Yeah, start bodying the crypt ghouls because they really don't like being flanked. Like, they really don't like it. It's pretty funny. I want you guys to go there. If you can get there quickly enough, you can fire on the Grave Guard as they come in. And that'll help. Uh, let's see. Second assault team of peasants. I'm giving them fancy names, but we can't ignore the fact that this is a bunch of people with shovels and pitchforks. Get into position, get ready to fire on them. The lords are doing well. They're fine. Ready to fire. I don't think that's really... I don't think they can really fire from there. We'll see. Oh, no, they're managing. Good, good, good. These two are buffing the peasants. Yeah, they've got a 37 melee attack, which is pretty fucking good for peasants. That's better than most actual military units. Alright, if we start moving the handgunners around, wait for them to commit to an attack, then we might be able to shoot them in the back. Because they're going to start committing units to making sure we don't push any further by this point. We've killed too many of their units already. Army losses is probably right around the corner. Go in on them. Mob them. New lot, uh, charge. May as well. Oh, army losses just kicked in. Bitch, you know it. Okay, uh, you guys stop firing. We are good. We did that with virtually no losses. We just spent a fuck ton of ammo, which we get back as soon as the battle is over. Nice. I was gonna say, don't you dare give me a close victory. That wasn't close. That was a siege warfare. Done right. And also the AI is a bit brain dead when it comes to countering, uh, ranged units when... They don't have ranged units, but shh, doesn't matter. A win's a win. And in that case, in that, uh, on that occasion, I wouldn't say that's me being unfair. That's how you do a siege, surely. You wouldn't just run in the front door. It's like, okay, well, I've got siege weapons. I'll fucking flatten them first with uh, artillery fire and stuff and arrows, then send melee in. You soften them up. That's real world warfare. That's real world tactics. That's what everyone did in World War One and Two. You just shell them for ages and then send the troops in. Doesn't always work, obviously, because if it did, well, battles would have been weirdly one-sided. But that was a very common strategy. And it applies here as well. Plus, not being funny, but looking at these armies, if I was playing as Sylvania, I could have won this. Absolutely. And I know exactly how I would have done it. Instead of trying to hold the perimeters of the minor settlement, retreat back towards the center, wait for them to commit, allow their mortars to get into range to start firing, and then send either the wolves or the bats to circle around and kill them. Probably the bats to take care of the mortars and the wolves to take care of the pistol is. The peasants aren't going to do much damage on their own. They could be taken care of by Graveguard, fucking skeleton warriors and whatever. The idea would be to inflict army losses, but wolves and bats can take care of archers, mortar crews, pistoliers, handgunners, could kill all of them easy. And then what, it's just two lords leading a band of peasants? Like, the lords are a danger, sure, but we do have spearmen, and Gra Graveguard would give them an honest run for their money. This wouldn't have been difficult, really, if I was playing as Sylvania. It could have gone wrong, totally. I don't doubt that, but I think I could have won. But, you know, they didn't do that, so fuck them, I guess. We're making a little bit of money, but not much. We're going to have to really curb our spending now. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's looking a little dicey. Now, these guys aren't actually replenishing because the replenishment is too poor because we're not good in this region. Oh, but the pox shelter would cost over a grand. Okay, here's what we do. Blessings of the lady be upon you. We'll leave Ragnarok in there because he is replenishing, but we'll move Sir Toddy into their territory because we don't own it, so it technically counts as being better terrain than if we owned it. It's very backwards. While we were camping here, while it was hostile, we were getting replenishment, but now that we own it and we don't like the mountains, we don't get as much from it in terms of replenishment, which is absurd, but yes. it is the way the game runs. It's just how it is, but we need money desperately, so we need to get that. Francois Arkenbar. Please get down here. Okay, you two. Apparently you're not recruiting that anymore. I don't care. You got more units, that's good enough. Do you know who I am? I have the soul. Now I would love to just send Zeno by himself, but I'm not actually gonna put him at risk, so let's just fucking take care of him. The lady wills it! Oh come on, don't give me that. They've got four units of zombies. 
I don't want to... Oh, fuck it. Oh, I'll manually fight it. It'll take a moment. Oh, I'll skip through it because it's not worth showing you guys at all. This is just to make sure I don't lose an entire unit. Which, yeah, it's a unit of basic Empire Spearmen. It's not a big deal, but veterancy is important. And recruiting units takes time. And time is not on our side. I'm not sure if Zeno could specifically take a Vampire Lord, so I'm not going to have him duel on Omorphen because I don't think it would go very well. Yeah, 59, 67, that's not really on par with a Vampire Lord. He'll get there. I'm still working on his melee stats and we can get him some better equipment, but he's not there yet. We'll move back just in case they decide they want to immediately charge. They can do that if they want. He's trying to heal them, but he can't resurrect them above what they had when they started the battle. If, the, if, they, if he had 160 units of zombies in that unit and they all just had one HP, he could totally heal them all, but because he's actually suffered entity losses and those entity losses were here at the start of the battle, it means he doesn't get anything. So sucks to be him. What a fucking loser. Vampire indeed. That must be why he sucks so much. And we have arrived. Okay. Time to play this cheap and day. Here's what we do. Everyone form a line. Doesn't have to be a good one, just has to be a line. Good. Archers. Hang on, those archers, yep. Form a line behind them. You guys get out there, I've got work for you to do. You may as well come back, there's no point you being there. You come forward and uh, heal yourself, because, you know, just get some health back. Indeed, indeed. And you guys just run up there and start shooting the zombies with your grenade launchers, which you just have. You just have grenade launchers, because sure, why not? Why wouldn't you have grenade launchers? Oh boy, here we go. Oh fuck, wow, that's most of them gone. Yep, that's a good start. 21 kills on the first salvo. Alright, they are admittedly getting a little close. Can you fire one more? Yeah, you can. They'll probably melt on their own. The vampire is trying to catch up. I say, fuck that guy. What a loser. All my homies hate Onomorphen. He's a nerd. If he runs ahead of his forces, then our archers will drown him in arrows. So that'll be pretty fun. See if you can fire another salvo before he gets close. Good. Good job, lads. Well done. Yep, that's much more of them dead. He's probably wasted most of his wins of magic trying to heal units that couldn't be healed. Because he's a moron. He is. Now, if he's just doing a... Is he doing a charge or is he just chasing the fucking grenadiers? Because if so, he's even stupider than I thought he is. And we can make use of that. I would like to get rid of the zombies first so we have nothing else to focus on. If I can get through this without suffering a single casualty, I'll be quite happy. I might leave this in just as an example of japery. Look at this japery. It's fucking japing for days. So much japing. Stuff like this might seem silly, but... And I'll keep it brief this time because I have said it many times. This is important to keeping your armies healthy for the purposes of campaign effectiveness. You don't have to do this all the fucking time because that would get extremely dull. But when you know you're in a tight situation and every man counts, and replenishment can mean the difference between victory and defeat, you want to make sure you keep your armies healthy. Also, this is getting the Outriders a lot of experience, which doesn't actually help them very much because they're missile cavalry, but it's something. It's another thing. It's another asset. We need every advantage we can get. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Shoot them if you would. More grenades. Delightful. Even Morfen the Loser uh, took some damage. Yes, that's his name now, Morfen the Loser. Don't worry, he won't have the name for very long. Oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> this is why you don't run a zombie stack, because they're so fucking slow.
Now I say we see if we can be a little bit clever about this. They're gonna melt on their own, we don't need to fire on them anymore, and wasting ammo wastes balance of power anyway, which does contribute to army losses. See if we can get them over here, and then he will run in on his lonesome, and get shot by a million arrows and grenades. Evidently he's actually run out of magic trying to heal his units who couldn't be healed because he's not healing himself. He will... Oh, he doesn't have the hunger, so he can't even regenerate in melee, so he actually has no way to heal himself anymore. It appears he doesn't want to charge. Apparently losing all of his zombies was not considered enough balance of power loss to warrant an actual charge. That's fine, we'll keep shooting at him. It's fine by me. Hey buddy, do you like grenades? Do you like- do you like grenades? <laughs> I don't think he likes them very much. It didn't do much damage, but it gave him something to think about. <laughs> Stop, he's already dead. <laughs> His shield does not protect him from grenades, as I'm sure you guessed. <laughs> It's like the, the gr it's like the outriders tripped him over while he was trying walking through with his lunch tray, and his chicken nuggets went all over the floor. And then he put the chicken nuggets back on the plate on the tray, and went to go continues to go to his table. And the outriders keep tripping him over, and he just keeps doing it over and over and over again. I would feel sympathy if it wasn't for the fact that he's actually a vampire lord, and not a Pepe. Fire on him, lads. Rain of arrows. Oh, his health is going down a bit. Not tons, because, you know, most of our archers aren't very accurate. Formation to battle! He's getting the shit shot out of him, Jesus Christ. Quick march! And he's still gonna chase them. Oh Go! my god. Oh, you poor man. Oh, who programmed you to be this fucking stupid? No Oh. Rip. Okay, now he's actually going to try and do something about the archers. It might be too late, though. Okay, we shouldn't fire on them with grenades anymore because we will likely hit our own people. Is that army losses? Not yet, but it will be. He's crumbling. Yep, that's army losses. And down he goes. Oh, zero losses, zero damage taken, I think, actually. They didn't touch us. That, that was very mean, and I'm glad I did it. It's nice to be able to indulge some level of vindictiveness and malevolence in my soul sometimes. The key is knowing when to and when not to. And Total War Warhammer 3 is the time when you can. Cool, free experience, free money, good stuff. Keeps us going. Talisman of Preservation, Armor of the Mids, we did not deserve any of those things, and Xeno got Warrior, which actually helps him a lot. My reputation proceeds. Xeno, buddy, let's set you up. Talisman of Preservation, Armor of the Midsummer Sun. Suddenly you just became a lot more effective. Yeah, you'll love to see it. I'm wondering if Sword of Anti- Sword of Anti-Heroes might be more useful Xeno for um, Xeno. But I know the corn side of him still yearns for his old days of dual axe wielding, and I figure giving him one axe is at least, you know, suitable. Plus, if we get his stats up high enough, then he will just sunder the armor of anyone he fights, and they will die quite quickly, so may as well leave it, leave him with it. Perfect. Now, it's worth pointing out that um, uh, Vlad might start heading this way, and if he does, we need to be ready. We don't really have the money to recruit more this units right now. Oh, that is a bother, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bother. Oh, bugger. Okay. Losing Wei Jin was actually a bit of a problem. There was a lot of money in there. Carcassonne, do you no, want to trade? Yeah, you want to trade. And you want to give me money as a result. Yeah, you do. Thank you very much. Aquitaine, what about you? You want to trade? Yeah, you do. Give me some money. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, that helped the situation a little bit. 
These guys are going to need units if they want to win this war. It is the way of things. Basic training for your army. Um, yes. Zeno, we can at least get you something, surely. More archers. More spearmen. I will indulge you. Hey, so Paul the Oblivious leveled up. Delightful. More health. And Slol leveled up, and he's now immortal. Congratulations, Slol. You can't be killed in battle. You can be wounded, but you will come back. Thereby cementing your place in the playthrough, because you actually can't leave. Which I think is an all-round positive result. Green Knight, keep going. We could use your help in dealing with Lad, honestly. No access to peasants here. Which sucks. I would quite like to get some. How much is the foundry of bones making? Not much. Nah. Red Fortress would hit their finances harder than anything else, but it is well defended, it's worth pointing out. The Red Fortress ain't is not a crumbly little hamlet that we can just run over. It's a fortified fortress, and that'll be quite a battle to take it. Fuck it, get some money going there. And can I upgrade any of these on the cheap? That would be too exp not too expensive, but we'd only have one turn left before we went into debt, and we do not want to suffer that attrition. We should probably stick to making sure we have a bit of a lump sum in our in our coffers so that if Vlad takes a bunch of places or whatever, we don't end up in the black. Or in the red, sorry. I don't understand financial terms. I'm not very good at them. Registered draft, when that goes through, will help us a lot. That minus five upkeep will make a big difference because we're fielding a lot of peasant soldiers. Not the actual peasant mob themselves. They don't cost any upkeep, but like man at arms and stuff. I'm enjoying this campaign very much. There was a bit of a period of time where I just wasn't really able to do more of this because uh, I had other priorities. Other videos had been recorded and I was like, well, I should probably put those out first. You know, like I was doing Helldivers with uh, Luna and Rooster and stuff like that. Um, and I was a bit, I was, I was like, I really want to get back to this. Like, I don't want to just leave it. I don't want this to, um, to melt away like the rest of my um, Total Warhammer series have done where I've been like, oh, it's not really a priority. I can't afford to keep prioritizing it. And like, I don't blame my or blame or begrudge myself for making those decisions previously because it is a good point this isn't a good move uh, from a business sense and i really do need to try and turn a buck out of this just so i can live life uh but like i've said it is also extremely important to actually do something relaxing and something enjoyable indulge myself a little bit because otherwise definitely get tank rid mentor that's gonna be very important otherwise Look, if I wanted to make money, like if my primary 100% no other goal in mind goal was to make money, I'd just, I'd do literally anything else. This is not an efficient way of making money. But the goal, the plan, the dream, as it were, is to make, is to make a living, not get rich or anything like that, but make a living doing something I love. That's what I want. That's the hope. That's the goal. And in order for that to be the case, A, I have to work at it because it's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But B, I need to actually be doing something that I love. Which isn't to say I don't love like the other series I've been doing and stuff. I've been over this a million fucking times, but I always feel the need to re-emphasize it just in case. Limbus is a great time. I'm looking, I'm definitely planning to do more Power Worlds soon. I haven't fallen off of that. It's just other stuff came up. And I definitely want to do more um, Helldivers because that was a lot of fun. And I want to do a video actually where I solo some missions on some relatively spicy difficulties just to see how that goes. Because uh, I've done a bit of it in my own time, but I want to push it on camera and see how far I can get doing that. Um, but the point is, I like everything I'm doing. But this is, this is pure enjoyment. This is just fun. This is just, yeah, I could sit here and do this all day if it wasn't for the fact that I have to edit it later. Now, that might mean to you that, like, why not stream it? And honestly, if I was going to stream anything, it would probably be this. I'd just do streams and people could come check them out as they decided to do so. But my internet is not good enough, frankly, to stream. Which means you guys would get a extremely scruffy, shoddy experience that would be much worse than if I just made videos, you know, like it would be significantly lower quality and I don't think that's fair on you guys to um, to do that. I'm doing this for myself, but it can't all just be for myself. I have to take you guys into consideration as well and give you something worthwhile. And a stream would not be worthwhile because I don't 
have the necessary like internet as it were to make it worthwhile it would just be bad and i say fuck that i don't want to give you guys bad i want to give you guys good we are making a profit now that's actually very good vlad is coming south no sorry vlad is going north even beg your pardon he's going north dragon's crossroad is in range but harrieth is not in range of the dragon's crossroad if I'm stood there and he attacks it, I will reinforce the Dragon's Crossroad, but Harrieth won't. She's heading there, but Vlad will get there first because his turn happens first. So what I want to do is actually be just out of range of the settlement, but in range of Harrieth, and she can decide what she wants to do. If she wants to go for it, I will help her. If not, then we'll have to fight him somewhere else. Bring Green Knight down here. You've gotten your units. That's marvelous. I see you. These guys can take Ulrich. I'm 90% sure these two armies totally can. Going forth. Even without the uh, the garrison of the Terracar Graveyard, because the Terracar Graveyard garrison is non-existent. But these guys can take that army. It'll be a bit rough, but they can totally do it. Devotee of the lady. Are there any garrisoned? Oh, we could get some dwarves. Or dwarfs, beg your pardon. They would be useful. We've finally got our, our alliance of men, elves, and dwarfs. Took a while, but we're there. You're still replenishing. That's very good. You're getting two more. You may as well get some peasants as well. We'll overwhelm them with sheer numbers. That's how we'll run this. It was always the plan. While we've got some money, you did your turn. Yeah, you're just recovering from that. That's fine. Shyama's Rest is level 1. We need to get to level 3 to get that building. Get rid of that. Replace it with uh, anything else. We do not need stables in Shyama's Rest. Two turns, it'll rank up, and then we can upgrade it. Getting that will be incredibly useful, but I doubt we'll get this landmark building in time for this war, but I would be surprised if we weren't fighting Warriors of Chaos, Chaos Dwarfs, Demons of Chaos, Undead, or Greenskins in our future. Pretty sure that's going to be quite important, and research rate is always important. So, yeah, it works out. Upgrade Fu Chao. That is a potential moneymaker. We just need to get it there. Keep money in the bank, just in case. And, uh, let's see. Uh, no, that's all good. Okay, well, everyone's moved. Next turn, we get lowered upkeep, which will help in a major way, and we'll see what Flads does. Defeating him in battle will help, but it's not going to be the be-all end-all of this because he will come back. But disrupt any disruptions that we can cause and then capitalize on will help immensely. We need to destroy his armies. We need to kill his generals. And then we can push back. Where did Vlad go? He went down to... Oh, he went down to Pome. That's scary. We might have to abandon the Terracotta Graveyard then. Before the rightful lords of the realm. All right, so J Custodians want Defensive Alliance. That sounds great. Absolutely happy with that. Let's just explore our options. But for now, yeah, we'll go with this. I am glad. Nice, that saved us some money. I'm actually going to explore my diplomatic options here real quick, because if I can get some vassals, that would increase my power immensely. Start with you. The Empire is beset on all sides by the savage and the unholy, but you are most welcome. Gave you Li Su or was it Lear Temple? What if we gave you Lear Temple? You would become a vassal if we gave you Lear Temple. That's that's a good deal. We get a ton of money out of it. Lear Temple has nothing special in it, and it's actually unfavorable terrain for us. Go for it. Sigmar's will. Cool. Now we have a vassal. He will do as we say. What about Safari? I am incredibly busy. State your business. All right, all right. I was, she's not interested in taking the Dragon Gate. That's fine. Well, she would take it, but she wouldn't give us anything in return for it. Um, so not Safari, not you them. What about you? Your death will be remembered in another of my glorious sagas. The fuck is your problem, Taitsu? Do you want Taitsu? Not really. Well, I mean, he'd happily take it, but he won't become a vassal for it. Why do you not like us again? Oh, you don't like the Cult of Sigma. You're trading with the Cult of Sigma. Oh, fucking whatever, man. Jesus, what a fucking douche. 
If we can push the advantage and start clearing out some of these places, it will affect Vlad. He didn't go for um, the Dragon's Crossroad, which is interesting. He's come down here. He is within range of um, the Terracotta Army, or Terracotta Graveyard, and Ulrich is coming down through there. Lord of Bortonia. He's not going to be able to take Mingxu and tell you that, but... No. We're in an awkward position, because if we could get pincered between Ulrich and Vlad, and one of them... Ulrich himself... Sorry, Vlad himself would be bad enough, but with Ulrich backing him up, there's no chance. No. Honor before glory. Can you guys make it back to Mingxu? Because even Vlad on Force March is still a threat. For now, yes. I have seen your heart. You can't get to him. I'm going to assume you can't either. Nope. Are yours. Uh, that's awkward. That's very awkward. I think we've been played ever so slightly there. I don't plan to lose those two. I have plans and schemes to deal with the situation, but that's still not great. Those guys have nearly fully replenished. Maybe if we fought Vlad with the benefit of walls, albeit damaged walls, and a mostly full garrison, and my full army, we could perhaps Very take him. Well, if you insist. It would be an extremely awkward battle. Such insolence. Lord. And settlement for sieges, even defensive sieges, don't really leave much room for um, cavalry to maneuver. Our cavalry is very good, but is it that good? We could use them defensively, I suppose. They send in Vargeists. They send these guys in on flying mounts to attack our archers and stuff. The horsemen could counterattack, but are they even good enough to take Isabella? Maybe with those numbers, perhaps? We'll have to give Vlad some options. But the fact remains, if these two stay here, they will die. Either we lose the Terracotta Graveyard, or we lose the Terracotta Graveyard, Lori, and Zeno, all at the same time. Right, it's damage reduction at this point, not a chance to defend the place. These two are not strong enough to take Vlad, let alone Vlad and Ulrich. It's not happening. Do you know who I am? Not even the biggest optimist in the world, if they had sufficient knowledge of this game, would think that that's going to turn out well, because it's not. Ogre Blade's kind of lame. Sword of Antiheroes would make me fight better. I've already got armor-piercing damage somehow? How do I have armor-piercing damage exactly? Oh, because I'm on a Hippogriff. That's right. Which is good for munching through um, zombies. Of but not good for dealing with, say, Isabella, who would intercept me if I was in the air. Maybe I could use that to fuck with her, though. Or, if we can get her to land, I could then fly behind their lines and start shredding some of their infantry, keep them away from the rest of my troops. Plans and schemes, I suppose. There's stuff to work with. We should get the Death's Grip Decree. It's not going to do much, but an extra eight leadership is actually very helpful. My leave. I'm going to go into the Dragon Gate. I reckon, possibly, I could take Vlad. If I don't, I'll die again. It occurs to me, because I'm not immortal. Whoops. Blessings of the lady oh. be upon you. Now, the Dragon Gate is still damaged, which means the walls won't actually hold. So, unsurprisingly, we're not even going to attempt to hold them at the walls. I have a plan for that. It's okay, but... You two... Simpleton. All right, chill. Uh, you two need to start heading that way. Noble, if the lady wills it. Perhaps link up with Toddy and Ragnarok and see what you can do there. But attempting to hold them at the Terracotta Graveyard would be pointless, and they can't make it to Mingxu straight up. You can't do any agent action, so join Zeno, I suppose. If Vlad decides to go north, if he decides to split up his forces, Vlad goes north and Auric takes the Terracotta Graveyard, then these two can counterattack. If I can defeat Vlad, it would all work out perfectly. I can't stress how much of a big if that is, though. I do have the Blessing of the Lady. So the entire army is getting 15% uh, damage resistance. That will help. If you can take Shu Wu and Ai Sheng and then start pushing through here, because I have noticed that the Aislings are down here and being a, gr a grievance, a big grievance. A little bit. If you can deal with them, that would be great. 
kind of surprising that Drycha uh, actually has a magical tree or magical forest in this because usually when you randomize the map, the wood elves are the ones who suffer the most because they don't get a tree and that's literally how they recruit all their shit and make money. So if they don't have that, they're fucked. Get the pox shelter, start growing that place. Okay, well, let's see what happens. This was probably a bad move, but I'm giving it a try. Whether chivalrous or not, I will strike you down, scum, if your words displease me. <laughs> I decline. I'm going to wipe him out. I'm not having Kairos in my land anymore. Putting an end to this. Okay, Vlad didn't do anything. It's a good thing I repaired the Dragon Gate, huh? I hope that doesn't mean he's heading for our main province. They're building an outpost in the Dragon Gate. Interesting. Vlad might be heading for the Dragon's Crossroad. How wise. Of course. She's staying there to defend it. She won't hold him by herself. Can I get there in time without suffering attrition? I can, actually. Ulrich is still down there. Vlad can't get no. down here, so that's good. Okay. Honor before glory. I wonder. For now, yes. This is not a chivalrous thing to do, but... There is a chance, a 45% chance, so not high, but there is a chance that I could sneak in next to Dragon's Crossroad, then Vlad wouldn't know I'm there, and he would think to himself, oh wow, I could just swoop in and take the Dragon's Crossroad. Then I ambush him on the attack, then me and Harrieth can attack him whilst I'm ambushing him, and that will almost be guaranteed an auto-resolve victory. And that would be very good. Leaving. Fuck it. We ball. If this works, this will kind of fuck him up in the short term. Start upgrading that. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, that's very expensive and it doesn't need to be. We'll get Realm of Chivalry going and then we'll upgrade it. Okay. You two could go for Wang Shang, but I'd actually rather you went for Ulrich and knocked him out because he's a bit of a, he's just a bit of a nuisance down there. Don't really want to have to deal with him. Then he'll be more inclined to attack. We can fight back, kill him. He'll back off, probably into my territory. We run him down and consolidate from there. Hopefully my plan works and Vlad falls into it. He's a very smart guy, so I don't know if he will fall for it, but he might. And that would give us everything we need, at least in the short term. Like I said, Vlad will just come back. But defeating him would help. His army is extremely uh, experienced, so killing it would help. We want to have a financial cushion in case things go wrong, because it might. Especially if Vlad figures out that I'm currently ambushing. But we don't even necessarily need to land an ambush, we just need to draw him into a battle. Oh, whoops, elbowed my microphone. We just need to draw him into a battle with all of our forces. If we can do that, we should be able to beat him through pure numbers. Even though, like I've said before, Whether ah. Not, I will strike you down, scum, if your words displease me. Nope, there's no better time to fight you than right now. I don't think he went for it. That's a shame. I th yeah, I think he figured out that I was there. Considering I only had a 45% chance to ambush him, that doesn't surprise me. But it was worth a shot. It could have solved all of our problems. Vlad is still there. What this means is that while he knows I'm here, he's not going to make the attack. Because he recognizes that this is too much for him to take. He's extremely powerful, and he's also not stupid. Which is unfortunate, actually. I really wish he was stupid. That would help me a lot. But unfortunately, he isn't. It'd be worth heading down this line, because we could upgrade the knights in a major way. Leadership charge bonus, armor, weapon strength, melee attack and defense. This is stuff we want. Question is, do I go back to um, the Dragon Gate and risk letting Vlad take that over and then attack him while he's weak after the battle, or stay here in the knowledge that he probably won't lead the attack and it will just be something of a stalemate? I mean, if Safri lose the Dragon's Crossroad, it's not a big deal. And if I take it back from Vlad, I'll just sell it back to them again. So that could work out. But this all depends on Vlad being damaged enough from this fight to, you know, that I could defeat him. 
and also that he does what I think he'll do. Which, I don't know, he might. He also might not. Who can say? It occurs to me that uh, Ulrich didn't actually go for that. I don't really... I think he's trying to defend Wen Chang, which honestly... That doesn't have a defensive building. I reckon these guys could take him there. We have met before. It's not like we can move up to take Po Mai because then Vlad would just come down and knock him out. So we may as well go for this instead. The lady protects me. Moving out. That'll be a hell of a battle. We'll have to play that very carefully. I just don't think Harrieth will stand much of a chance. She's level 8 and she's got an incredibly basic high elf army. The Great Eagles might add some balance of power, but the rest of this is incredibly simple. Lord and hero. Very well, if you insist. I will indulge you. I'm going to keep trying with this. Okay, I've got a higher chance of succeeding over there. That could work. Go for that. Because once again, I'm not trying to necessarily ambush Vlad. I just want him to make the attack, and then all of us can fight him together. Valiant Lord. Keep it going, Toddy. We need you to take the Shrine of the Alchemist. Not for any particular reason. There's nothing special about it, but it's more lands and it's more money and it will fuck with Vlad and that's what we want. You guys are doing great. Your army of peasants doing surprisingly well. He didn't go for it. These lands are ours by the right Drycha is now talking shit. He's, she probably wants Shyama's rest. So that's going to be another problem. We need to start knocking out some of these enemies. It's going to be a while before Vlad goes, though. So Tancred might have to deal with um, uh, uh, Kairos and that one Norskin settlement down there. There's more of them down, like, in the deserts to the west, but they're not immediately where we are. We'll go let them hunt because we can't afford to have upkeep go up. Yep, my ambush was foiled again. Reputation. Fuck it, new plan. We need to prompt some action. The longer this goes on, the worse it gets for us. Blessings of the lady be upon Let you. him attack the dragon's crossroad. We bought them some time for the garrison to replenish, so that's something. He'll probably win, then we have to swoop in and try and take him out. That's all we've got. But we can't hang about doing nothing. It takes too long. And there's too much going on. Very well, if you insist. His army sucks, and he himself is a low level. The garrison also sucks. The main problem here is there's just a lot of them. But we have the Green Knight, so I think we should. Let's launch the attack. It will knock out one of his armies as well. Valiant defeat, which is surprisingly generous. Bring Zeno in. Consume them. She does have a lot of magic. She has Trickster Shard, which lowers her miscast chance by 20%. And then she has Earthing, which lowers miscast space chance by additional 15%. So that's total of 35%. And then she's leveled up as well as below, which means she has a minus 15% uh, miscast space chance for upgraded version of Dwellers Below, which brings up to minus 50% chance for miscast. I don't know if that takes into account all of our uh, bonuses. I'm going to assume it does, so she only has a 35% chance to miscast Dwellers Below. Possibly? I'm not sure. But it might be worth trying to land that spell, especially since she can heal herself anyway. Wow, that becomes a decisive victory. The game really rates the Green Knight. Okay, well, there's no point wasting time with a big fight there. Done and done. Knocked him out. Destroyed one of his armies. Killed one of his leaders. Got money and stuff. Laurie's now on a royal Pegasus. And so is uh, Zeno. That's great. That's some, that's some good stuff right there. Oh, yes. Continue buffing his melee stats, because that's all I want from him. I reckon we've got about five turns before Dreitra attacks, because she just cancelled the uh, non-aggression pact. And she's just sitting in our land, by the way. She's not leaving. So she clearly has hostile intent. But what do we do exactly about that? Like, she will declare war, she will take Shiama's rest, and then we'll go take it back. And that's going to suck, because fighting Wood Elves is hard. And Dreitra is a legendary lord. But what 
Well, I can't overstate enough. What exactly can we do about that right now? It would be either launch a preemptive attack on her for a reliability penalty and then start another war right now, or take out Kairos and then deal with her. We might end up losing uh, Shiyama's rest because someone else might take it, but if that's the case, that's the case. Whatever. Got a real tense triangle situation here. See if Vlad does anything. Maybe us taking his land will prompt an action. I believe he attacked uh, Dragon's Crossroad. I don't know where the fuck he went afterwards, but he did do it. See, now that we've got the Cult of Sigma under heal, they are our vassals. I'm actually going to accept this. We can't trade with them. But we can... Oh, they've got fuck all money. I'll come back when you've got some cash. Fucking hell. No, try again later. Ripperhorn tribe have attacked the Jake Custodians. I bet they're in my territory. I bet those beastmen are in my territory and they're going to attack some of my shit. Luckily, no, but it won't be long before they do. Still, we can't abandon our allies. It'll create problems. Lord so, a little bit spooky. Vlad did attack... I'm 90% sure he did. Yep, he attacked the Dragon's Crossroad, but then he disappeared. Presumably force-marched off somewhere. He could be... Or he might be in ambush stance. He could be right there, or he could be somewhere else. I don't know, but he took out Harrieth, that's for sure. That's awkward. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting him to occupy it and still be there, but presumably he did not occupy it because he knew I was nearby and didn't want to be vulnerable while I was nearby, which I gotta commend him. That is good thinking, but it doesn't help me very much. I'm taking this because Grom Brindle's being a shit, so I don't actually want him to get any more territory because he's being a shit. If he was nice to me, then, you know... I would happily help him get territory, but he's not being nice to me, so fuck him. He's an ally. But I don't care about him. Let's just take this for ourselves. Ragnarok completed his vow. You love to see it. You two did this, and that's very good. These two, however, can handle those settlements. Don't worry about them. I need you two to start pushing up in this direction. We need to... If we can push them out of Cathay entirely and push them beyond the Bastion, that helps. That gives us something to work with. It's pretty funny because, like I said, this series was intended for me to, you know, play this game and then just talk about stuff, but it's become so hectic of a campaign with so many constant threats and problems that I actually have to concentrate and need to keep my mind focused on what's going on rather than waxing lyrical, which... I mean, I'm happy. I'm having a good time. I like the game. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. But I, I, I do acknowledge that this is not the original <laughs> intent in which I, with which I started doing this. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's a little different. But hey, that's all right. It's fine. You know, it's, it's still serving its purpose as a therapy campaign because I'm enjoying it and I get to just sort of do what I want for a while. This doesn't surprise me even slightly. We'll have to keep an eye out for them, I suppose, but they're pretty far away, so... It's not like we can go out down there and take them out, although I think I just saw one of their territories. I'll need to go have a look. But cool, we might be dealing with uh, Vampire Coast as well. Great. Fantastic, and a legendary one, no less. I'm not particularly attached to the, uh, the Terracotta Graveyard. I reckon these two should probably move to take the Snake Gate. Leaving. It would just allow us to secure more of the area. Spellcaster. I know the way. Once we've secured the Bastion, we just need to push them, you know, from it out there. Hopefully the High Elf, I mean, it's going to take the long time for Safri to actually raise an army again, because I'm pretty sure every unit they recruit takes two turns out there. So they're not having a good time. Honestly, Harriet losing her army did not help us very much, but... Oh well. well. These things happen. If you insist. 
You two keep doing what you've been doing. You've been doing great work. Keep it up and keep it going. You've actually been helping us really fuck with uh, Sylvania, so that's great. My reputation precedes me. And their troops are getting better. But I don't think Sir Toddy and Sir Ragnarok are going to take Vlad with an army of peasants. There's just nothing here that could kill Vlad. And wisdom are yours. <laughs> Maybe fire arrows, but they wouldn't kill him fast enough, I can tell you that. Yep, Kairos is in Shivu, so if we attack it... You are a full feathers. That's going to be quite a battle, as it turns out, because he's entrenched and he's got nearly a full stack. He will probably have a full stack by the time Sankrid gets there. Oh, that's a problem. Blessings of the lady be upon you. Meanwhile, I'm just sat here not doing anything. I could attack the Turtle Gate because he would be less aggressive on the defense. Valiant Lord. But... Oh, I just don't see it going very well, you know? It would be better to fight him if he was on the defense, but if I come round here and attempt to approach, oh, yes. he's going to come out and attack. He's not going to wait for me. He would be insane to do so. There's no way to really sneak up on him at the moment. All we can do is try and pull out his economy from, uh, from underneath him. I think that's all we've got. Take these territories. See, I mean, see if we can... We're not going to take back Weishin because it's within his reach. But if we can take everything else, that's a lot of his money gone. Which, you know, the AI get financial cheats, so that is limited in its effectiveness, but it's something. Take the Snake Gate, it's just less ter uh, territory for him. Maybe these two could push up and take the Fortress of Eyes. It won't do much to him at all, but it is something else, and we could give it to Safari, and that's a relatively safe place that can just make them a bit more money. Armored in faith. There are things we can do, but at the same time, oh boy, uh, there's a lot we can't do. And Drycha is just going to take Shiama's rest. She's gonna. There's no point putting any money into here right now. Do you want Taitsu? Oh, I would get another non-aggression pact, but we would lose an entire settlement for what is basically a temporary thing. She doesn't like the Cult of Sigma or the Ancestral Throng. She's an enemy, unfortunately. The natural um, political allegiances have designated that she is going to be a foe, and we're going to have to fight her. She will also have to fight the Jade Custodians, and the Cult of Sigma, and the Ancestral Throng. She's going to have to fight a lot of people. But we, sh we are going to fight her. It's almost guaranteed. And we just have to accept it. Just hopefully later rather than sooner. But knowing her, she'll probably attack almost straight away. As soon as the um, grace period after the cancellation of a non-aggression pact wears off, she'll go for it. Well, I'd really like to deal with Vlad quickly, but it's not happening. Oh, you're attacking us. This is not surprising. I reckon I can choke point this. Biggest threat here is Dreiska himself, but... Like I said, might be able to choke point it. The fact that they've got crossbowmen is unfortunate, but we can just counter snipe them, it should be okay. Got the same range. I mean, it will disrupt them if we can beat them here. And it will get us some money, and we'll get to keep this place so we won't lose um, per turn income. It's worth trying, at the very least. The crosswomen will probably run off pretty quickly if we just shoot them. And then the archers can focus on the rest of them, I suppose. I'm not overly confident here. I think their aura resolve is being quite generous, because mainly because they have a lord leading them. If they didn't have a lord leading them, which is impossible, I understand, but, you know, speaking hypothetically here, if they didn't have a lord, I reckon we'd be okay. But because they do, our chances of victory are low. Oh my god, get moving, please. Thank you. We'll keep the spearmen back just in case they go around the side, and we'll keep the swordsmen in reserve as well. And we'll have the peasants slowly die. And we'll speed things up because we've got lives to live, and every second that I'm recording this takes a fuck ton of data because for some reason the file sizes for uh, Total Warhammer 3 footage is very high. Probably because there's a lot of moving parts. So that's a thing. 
I think some of them might have wandered off to go around the side, which sucks, but there's nothing I can do about that. Except for put people in the way, which I have done. They're forming up, which is weird. Okay, yeah, they literally just waited to form up. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Push them up a little bit. I need to counter snipe their crossbowmen. I have to. It is necessary. Because they will do too much damage. Good, they're taking a lot of damage. You lot should push up. You guys should go there. Like there. And you guys should go there. Just form a, a body, a wall of bodies. Archers need to keep shooting them. They're doing a good job. Yeah, you guys definitely need to catch up. They're currently shooting our archers, which is annoying, but we should be able to kill them soon. They'll run off soon. Unfortunately, they are shooting our peasant bowmen, and they've done quite a bit of damage, but what can we do about that exactly? We did as much as we could about it. Did you just walk right through? Who said you could do that? Fuckers. I'm going to pull them a little closer in. I need them to start shooting the Cryptorus. It's very important that they do that. God help us! The peasants are already starting to fold. Good, good, good. They're taking a lot of damage from that. The crossbowmen are coming back, though. I'm going to need them to counter snipe them as soon as they get in range, which is now. Spare men at arms. arms, I would like you to push up. That's right, run away, you bitches. Go on, off you go. Off you go, good. Uh, where are those Cryptoris? There they are. Keep firing on them, they need to die. We're going to do the most damage via our archers. The melee units are just there to hold them back. So once the archers run out of ammo, we're fucked, by the way. But, you know, we'll worry about that when we get there. I suppose. Look at that, the crossbowmen are coming back. They only get one more life, as it were. Once they break again, they're gone. If we can get them to crumble, we won't need to shoot them anymore, because they'll die of their own accord. They're back in range. Don't let them fire. Don't let them use their ammo. Luckily, peasant bowmen fire quite quickly. It makes up for their lack of accuracy and general damage. Okay, they've shattered. Very good. Okay. Uh, I was going to leave them to crumble, but they regenerate, and also crumbling is quite slow. So I think he's trying to push through to the archers, which is interesting. So I might need to push these guys back. The crypt horrors are definitely trying to push through, so I want them to pull back a little bit. But they've gotten to the spearmen now, they'll start dying a lot quicker. So I'm inclined to let the archers actually pitch, pick their own targets now. So, some of our... You, oh, you pushed through the line? There is no reason, there is no point trying to get them to hit them in the back. They will die. So actually, just go that way and come back round. It's going to take a long time and you probably won't make it in time to do anything, but whatever. If we can kill their leader, that will do everything. So I'm actually glad that the archers are focusing on him. If he dies, that is their biggest advantage gone. And they've got enough ammo to kill him as well. Could actually make this work. And they're stabbing the fuck out of him as well. He's not having a good time. 
They broke and are fleeing. They're shattered even and they're fleeing. Very good. I know what I should do, actually. If you guys are feeling a little bit brave, just stand there. Stand there and don't do anything because it will lower enemy leadership to have an exposed flank and have enemies standing there. They can actually do more by just standing there than they can by fighting. I need you guys to keep shooting at him. It's quite important. And if you're not going to shoot at him, then shoot at someone else. Their leadership is low, but not too bad. And if they rest, it'll go back up. God help us! They're starting to finish punching through the peasants, but the men at arms are actually holding quite well. You guys just wait there. If I'm right, and God knows I always am. Exposed flank. Okay, you guys might just need to get a little bit closer. Just a little bit closer. To make sure it counts. Some of them are already starting to crumble. His leadership is consistently around half. It will start going down more and more. The zombies have reverse charged, but they're not... Well, they're probably going to drive them off, honestly. Yeah. Shouldn't have moved them so close. I actually maintain you two should focus firing on him. You need to kill him. It's the key to their army. Very good, very good. Let me just move you guys along. You guys go there to rest. You're also nearby, so that's nice. Fire on him, he needs to die. If he dies, the rest of the army will suffer. He's also their best fighter, so there's that. This is how we'll win. If we win. It's a big if. Are they chasing those peasants? Good. Lead them away. He's going down. And he's dead. Cool. Fire at will, then shoot wherever you want. Their overall leadership has plummeted. They won't get any more healing spells. Men at arms still holding. I think we might have this. Just gonna have those peasants continue to lead those zombies away. Suits our purposes. As you can see, the balance of power has equalized considerably. Every instance you see of that red smoke coming off of the units means that they're crumbling, which means the units are melting, literally melting because their leadership is so low, so they're taking damage every second, which means it's not very fast, but it means they are steadily losing more and more and more. The bad situation is getting worse for them. Now those peasant bowmen have run out of arrows, but they might serve as a wall if need be. Those guys are still firing. They're doing great. Honestly, I should have had them focus on their lord ages ago, but I wasn't sure if they could really hit him. I was worried they'd hit everyone else. But nah, that was the move. That was the play. They did a very good job of it. You guys keep running. They're still following. You can see their overall numbers are starting to drop. It's working. It's definitely working. Because the men-at-arms may suck, but they are better fighters than zombies and skeletons. It'll eventually get to the point that we've inflicted enough damage that the rest of them will just melt. Continues to just suffer losses.
Yep, they're starting to melt. And as they melt, the others get upset and start to melt, which then causes others to get upset and start to melt. This is what we want. They're fresh. They're as good as they're going to be. If they actually have to fight, they won't last very long. Mainly due to morale rather than their own ineptitude. It's a little touch and go, but I think we've got this. We've used all of our ammo now. What your melee stats like? Very bad. Yeah, good to know. If we can crumble those um, skeleton spearmen, I'll tell you what, actually. Don't charge in yet. Well, you guys are more upset. You'd break straight away. You guys can do it. You're fresh. You're confident. Just go in and provide a little bit of extra muscle. It might make those spearmen a little more brave, knowing they've got mates. Oh, they're still following you. That's crazy. Oh, they shattered. Okay, they're gone. Some of our better units are starting to rout, though. From it's this side's crumbling, this side isn't. On, in their terms. On our terms, both sides are technically crumbling. Those spearmen have ran off. I want you to get involved and help. The peasants that weren't involved just fled, which is unfortunate. We just need you to kill them. Those spearmen are doing very well, but it, they're starting to crumble. We just need to get rid of them. Those men at arms will last a little bit longer in combat, but they need a minute to rest. Or their talents will be wasted. Though that unit of zombies is on its way back, and there's a lot of them, so that's a problem. Yeah, we're starting to lose balance of power again. Come on. These, these units are good. These units are decent fighters. They just need a minute to rest. That's it. You guys have done it. Very good. Hit them in the side. It's going to be a long time before those zombies arrive. They are crumbling. Fuck it. Get involved. Everyone gets involved now. You had your time to rest. It was not nearly enough, but I don't care. Get in there and make it happen. We need to kill them before they show up. Getting there. Come on, boys. Yep, the balance of power is starting to shift in our favor. Again. It's really going backwards and forth. So, skeleton spearmen are actually the main problem here. I think you got the research, which means uh, spearmen don't suffer from fatigue anymore. So they're fighting as well as they did at the start of the battle, which is awkward. Their leadership is very high for what they are. But having those zombies die will cause it to go down. They'll be outnumbered and surrounded. And they are taking casualties. Yeah, they're getting very upset now. They'll start crumbling. Come on, start crumbling. Very nearly. Almost there. If they stop routing, they'll probably crumble.
want you guys to get closer, but not actually join the fighting anymore. I do want them to rest. The zombies are still miles away. They've started crump. They've started to see rain. Army losses. We've got it. Okay. That was very fucking close. <laughs> but I had a feeling we baby could. Obviously, killing the Crypt Horrors and their leader was key. Now, actually holding on to that settlement is not a big deal. What was that? The Terracotta Graveyard? Yeah, not a big deal. It's not worth much. Uh, it wouldn't be worth much to us, wouldn't be worth much to them. It doesn't really mean anything, but stopping them from taking it this turn, even if they end up sending Vlad down here to take it next turn or something, delays them. It slows them down, it kills their units. Like, this army's fucked. Dreska probably survived because this game's a real fucker about having it, uh, enemy vampire count lords survive battles, even if you actually physically kill them. Don't just wait for army losses. They still usually survive, but... He lost, he might be dead, at which point he's going to have to start fresh and start training up another lord, or he's heavily wounded and is going to need to fuck off for a while. Or he'll uh, mass recruit a bunch of units through um, Raise Undead and then take the settlement next turn, at which point they've still suffered a lot. Or he'll take it this turn, but they've still suffered. It's still a waste of time and it's a waste of money. They should have taken it this turn, but they didn't. Or well, they should have taken it on this specific attack, but they didn't. It fucks with them just a little bit, and we get some money for it as well. So, it does benefit us to do this. He's actually dead. We actually killed him. Brilliant. Or did we? Yes, we did. It's now another Crypt Lord fucking Strigoi Ghoul King, whatever called. Strigoi Ghoul King, yeah. Called Lothar. So that previous guy is dead. Uh, Vlad has moved down to Pomai. That's spooky. That means he's planning something. Probably planning to take the Terracotta Graveyard, let's be real. Blessings of the lady be upon you. I still can't get there. I could sneak my way down there, potentially. Okay, I've got another plan. This one's risky, but it could work. We have Zeno and Laurie just kind of hang out here, just out of range of Vlad's movement. Vlad will likely come down to help take the Terracotta Graveyard because he can't get to the Dragon Gate right now. I, and this is the risky part, this is the most risky part actually. I'm going to head here. Let me make sure I can get there actually. Uh, uh, not him, he's a loser. No, go here. Then go into ambush stance and then... If you insist gonna go there the plan such as it is Vlad comes down takes terracotta graveyard probably has Lothar backing him up to be honest but that army is damaged and he's level one so whatever then these three me Zeno and Laurie converge and defeat Vlad and take back the terracotta graveyard now I'm not doing this because I want the terracotta graveyard I don't give a fuck about it but this gives us the opportunity to pin him down and attack him on our terms at the very least, we can outnumber him. This is considered Terracotta Graveyard territory, so if you tried to recruit units, you wouldn't get them. Four out of four allied units, four out of four allied units, there's nothing you can get from there. We might be able to bring in some regiments of renown to help us. But we wouldn't be able to bring in the Companions of Quinells, because their upkeep would be 1.1k per turn, which is a bit absurd. That's what happens when you don't have your fucking vow. Get your fucking vows, is my advice to you. It'll take multiple turns to get down there. Tancred's gonna have a really rough time. Toddy, lead the charge. Close victory? I don't fucking think so. Ragnarok, get over there and help him out. Decisive victory. That's what we like to see. Occupy, very good. Ooh, potion of healing. That's actually very useful. And Toddy completed his vow. Look at him go. Pledge the campaign. It'll all come in handy someday. Buff the peasants again. Their stats still suck. I don't know how else to put it, but they do. Oh well. Flock of Doom is good for dealing with hordes. Nothing else to do this turn. We do have the green the green knight on our side. Let's see if Vlad does what I hope he'll do. 
which is attack the Terracotta Graveyard. He just said no, and that bothers me, but, you know, we'll see. It all really depends on my ambush being successful. If it's not, I'm fucked, first and foremost. It's an 80% chance of success, but I don't trust that for a second. Here it comes. That's... Oh, I was on ambush stance. There is... We could theoretically win this. We do have a choke point we can work with. We have multiple, actually. We have, our, we have a pick of a litter of potential choke points. I'm thinking about how I'd play this because Isabella would likely go after my lord, so I could potentially lead her into an ambush and shoot her to death. Our best bet for getting rid of Vlad is going to be army losses. We're not going to fight him directly, but Isabella will be much more aggressive and much more damaging because she would go for our ranged units. Unless we can shoot her down, or have the Knights of the Realm dogpile her, basically. His army is the best that it can be, considering what it is. Which is to say, mostly chaff infantry, but they're chaff infantry with quite high stats, even though skeleton spearmen are going to fight well. Probably better than mine will. Yeah. But we do have the advantage of ranged units. Are undead even vulnerable to poison? I think so. Getting to utilize the mobility of the Knights of the Realm will be important because all of their units that can catch them aren't suited to dealing with them, except for the Blood Knights. Uh, the sheer number of Nelson Knights of the Realm should be able to kill them, but they would do a lot of damage before they went. Straight up. But our Knights of the Realm are buffed. Even his zombies fight quite well, which bothers me. Which makes all the more reason why ranged firepower is going to be key here. And probably spells. Dwellers below will be quite important. But this battle, ladies and gentlemen, is going to have to be fought next time. Because it's been two and a half hours and this fight will probably take a little while at the very least. I don't know. Maybe it'll be over really quickly. It doesn't matter. I'm going to need to save this for next time. Gives you guys something to look forward to at the very least. Uh, you know, post in the comments. Do you think I can win? I'm doubtful. I think it's possible. I don't know if I personally can do it. Picking the right choke point is going to be very important. Making good use of the Knights of the Realm is going to be essential. The Mortars need to clear this chaff because, like I said, army losses is the only way we're going to win. Dwellers below is going to be extremely important and I'm going to have to play a serious role here, but I'm not quite sure what that role is specifically other than potentially luring Isabella and that vampire into a trap in which they get shot to shit by the handgunners. Maybe dealing with the Vargeis, but that's going to be a tough fight in of itself. Maybe just luring their flying units forward would be important. But we have to pick a choke point where they can't go around the side because we cannot... If we get flanked, it's it's over. It's We are done. If a black coach manages to get around the side, if the blood knights manage to get around the side, we will crumble. So I need to pick this very carefully. But that will be next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. It's going to be a bit of a doozy. Special thanks to Moa, Heartland, Herrick J, Draft, Dresso, Sion Distance, Lol, Final Legend, Etherbin, uh, Linky, Zion Cedar, Bimblewall, Majoko Maimoon, Alkir, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, Lord Skullington, Jess Kissy, Plutonium Pie, Dream of Ghost, Lepa Lullaby, K-Bub, Magical, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Warmaster Oku, SCP-106A, Namad, and KT-800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much guys and thank you all so much for watching i'm not sure i can win this really i have my doubt it would be bad enough if it was just vlad's army but extra reinforcements do make it worse it does mean that he won't attack straight away he will wait for reinforcements so we might be able to fuck with his army in the meantime if we can hit the grave guard with um dwellers below or something just mulch them because they are the worst part of his infantry block, then we need to try and lure his fast moving units into favorable engagements where we can kill them. Probably you're going to use the Knights of the Realm for that, but they're probably going to get extremely battered in the process unless I can be smart about it, but that's going to be tricky. But that will be next time, and I hope I see you there. Turtles, goodbye. I did quick save, didn't I? I'm going to do it again just to make sure.